G'day viewers, I'm going to open this thing up, give it a bit of a clean out, a bit of a dust out. I put a uh, modern RGB cable on this thing. I tested it with a laptop and I got a pretty good picture out of it. Windows 7 looks good on this. I'm going to use this as a retro monitor. Resolution wasn't too bad either. So, it's my retro computer monitor. Works quite well. Just needs a bit of a dust out. Have a good look inside, see what sort of flyback it's got. Okay, viewers, well, this thing's a lot better, um, cleaner than I thought. It says assembled in Korea. I always thought these are all uh, being made in Korea. So this would be um, made by Samtron, which is uh, Samsung. But apparently not. It's got all Japanese components. Even a good quality Japanese made it high touch CRT. Good quality stuff. Very good quality stuff. This is actually quite a good quality monitor. Pretty clean for its age. It's got a noise filter there, a good quality noise filter, made in Korea. It's 50 volt, 2 amp, 50 60 hertz. It's a DRT, DIT, noise filter. The other LG Studio works has one of those as well. There's the uh, speakers. Little amplifier board there. It's got a little, uh, try and read the um, chip number on that, what sort of amp it is. TDA282T. What's that? That'll probably be 6 watts if that. 6 watt amplifier. Little speakers there. 8 ohm, 2 watt, max 3 watt speakers. Not bad at all. I've, I've, I've got another set of these exactly like that. I played them pretty hard. They got bloody hot, but I didn't see the damage of voice coils, so good little speakers, those. There's the input. To a modulated. See the amplifier boards there. And it gets its power through here. Very cool. SHL nip, uh, series Nippon Kimikon capacitors. Fly back there. 40k VDC cable on it. <coughs> Singapore mode integrated circuit there. There's a flight back. It's actually the, the same as the uh, modern computer monitors use. They haven't changed much. That's just more of a grey colour. It's got more uh, bulkier bits on it. There's one of his NVS. It's very similar to that one. Yep, it's just a different colour plastic or it's older. But it's, a, it's the same flyback. Yeah, it hasn't got much room behind that to put a um, new primary on it, but I'm going to preserve this. It's even got cap screws as the uh, CIT clips. The GS brand amplifier with a crown symbol on it. There we are, I'm gonna, yeah, I might give it a bit of a dust over. Give it a little nice and clean. Kong Dan Dong, Kumi City, Kong Sang Bak Du, Korea. It's nice to see it uh, uses quality Japanese components. The input goes straight to the netboard, obviously, to the uh, driver board for the CRT. There's another little add on component down there. What is it? The TDA8145 on there. Little modern modern bit of technology there, or surface mount on that. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, let's get this. Uh, I don't know. Do a Fairlane 500 Skyline as chicken wash this thing. Give it a good wash. Clean it right up. Not bad. I probably just need to give it a light brush over, actually. It's not as bad as I thought. Yeah, that would do. The clean up on the case there, it came up quite well, quite nice. After careful reading, it's actually made by Gold Star, which is an LG, which actually stands for Lucky Gold Star, not Life's Good. Life's Good's just a marketing slogan for the consumers. But yeah, it's a Lucky Gold Star uh, monitor, not a Samtron. Here we got a Hitachi uh, yoke, because the um, Hitachi CITs use their own yokes. And they use a principle what's called a bonded yoke. So, which means a yoke, the uh, deflection collar sub is permanently glued onto the CRT. Does not come off. So, yeah. I don't know why Hitachi did that, but they didn't want the yokes to come off their CRT. So set it, with it, they set it, adjusted it, and they just glued it down. It never comes off. Looks brand new now, it cleaned up quite well. H, look at that symbol there. 
HF41327M. Semi tow may brand cable on that flyback. 105 degrees so Celsius, rated type TV40. Yeah, 40 kb rated. Yeah, the capacitors inside there. Screen and focus adjustment built in. Looks like it clips off this little top thing here for the um, screen control, the focus. Clips off and comes off. Interesting. Yeah, the FDT. I love the old flybacks. Anyway, I'll, uh, I think I'll reassemble this and it's pretty much done. Complete, put back together and cleaned up, cosmetically and internally. Beautiful. Much better, looks much better now. Anyway, since this here doesn't work, I want to leave it intact all as it is. What I want to do is just... The air compressor just filled up there. I want to wind the, segment, wind the ZVS primer on that and drive this thing on the ZVS driver as it sits in the circuit. See if I can power this thing just by the ZVS and the flyback alone. See what happens. Hmm, because it's got all the filament winding and everything in there. Might get some good effects on the screen by overdriving it with the ZVS on the flyback as it sits in the circuit as it is. So let's see if I can ZVS power this. Might be a bit tight to get the windings on that. It's going to be a bit of a challenge, so let's see. I don't even need mains power to power this thing. I can just uh, run this thing shut up as ZVS and have a good uh, DC battery powered uh, computer monitor. That'd be cool. ZVS powered computer monitor. Let's see if this actually works, shall we? Now I forgot. Those flybacks have a plastic sheath in between there. I'll have to slice that off and slip it off. Damn it. I would have loved to have run the primary on that flyback and drive it in the circuit as it is in the ZVS driver to see what would happen. Would have been nice having a ZVS power computer monitor. Uh. Oh, well. let's just get these ones going. Let's see how these work. If one of these turns out to be buggered, which I don't think it is, they'll both be working. I'll try it with one of these. See how we go. Right, let's get these powered up. Get these seven power dudes up yet. That figure eight just plugs straight in. The pins happen to be the right distance apart on the other end of this cord for the, the normal figure eight lead to go in. That goes in my variac, which I've got tied up to 100 volts. Checked with the multimeter, did some double checks. Exactly 100 volts. I ain't got any more of those transformers, as I said. I've only got, that's the only one I've got, so let's get to that a tripod. And I just uh, plug this in. And now it's stuck on 100 volts, that's set. Let's turn it on. Working. Oh, staticky. Wait for the picture to come up. Hopefully, these uh, CRTs aren't too bad at Nick. Well, the B and R K monitors, they're on bloody pretty much 24-7 and they get a lot of burn in. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's a bit of wear and dullness on these. Yeah, I've only got some picture there, that's it. Everything's all out of adjustment. I'm gonna have to do some adjusting on this one. Yeah, let's do some adjustments. Now it's just CIT equipment, be very careful not to kill yourself for this sort of stuff. Insulated screwdriver handy. I need a mirror for this sort of stuff now. Yeah, I'm only lighting up there. Let's do some adjusting. Very careful what we're doing here. Brightness. Bit of adjustment on all of that. Whew, actually that's not bad. That's not bad at all. That's actually quite good. Not sure what I would turn that way down though. Probably a good thing, CIT gets under driven that way. Lasts a lot longer. Yeah, you see a bit of a distortion there. Now I've got to try and find now the signal, get a signal in this thing. Yeah. I need a, I need a converter thing for this to get a signal into it. It works. 
holes on the width adjustments because all the adjustments on it. Yeah, everything just needs adjusting. Being out in the weather, these pots will be a little bit corroded a little bit. That will be nothing contact cleaner can't fix. Yeah, so it needs some adjusting. So what about the little border around it when it was in the monitor, the casing bit? I'm happy with that. That's working. That's working quite well. I might know for sure if I get a decent signal into these things. Let's try the other one. Now, just for safety's sake, we'll discharge a CRT for safety. How we don't uh, kill ourselves. So we've got the ground, which is this bit here, the bolt ground. That goes in there. Just do this. Can't be bothered to get my tripod out for this bit, so let's do this with one end. We can. We'll discharge. Bang! That was one hell of a charge in that CRT. Oops, scratched it a bit. Okay, that one's nice and safe. Let everything dissipate for a while. We'll unplug that and plug that one there and give that one there a test. This one. Yep, working. Okay, like this side of it. Another thing I've got to mention. CRT is out in the open. There's x-rays coming out of that, the back of that, so take note and be cautious of that too. Charged up. Yeah, they're both exactly identical, these two. Yeah. I guess the brightness being turned down is a good thing, I suppose. Better for the CRT or it'll last longer because it's been underdriven. It's quite a thick one too, it's about 10, centimet uh, 10 millimetres thick in the middle there. Let it warm up a bit. Yeah, I've got to turn the brightness back up, I think. I must have bumped the brightness when I um, took these out. Yeah, let's get some adjustments done. I can't see nothing on that at all. There we screwdriver go. Um, how would I put it? Oh, I'll get another one out. We'll get another one. Wish I had a mirror here. Be nice. Nothing. Yeah, the headers are working. Look at that. Bad connections. This one's got red on the screen. That one there was blue. So yeah, this might need some adjusting. Yeah, also, don't have a cluttered workplace when doing this sort of stuff. Bad combination. Not a good idea. Here's where you want a mirror, like a proper TV technician uses. But it works. Beautiful. We've got. Red, blue, cut off, and then cut off adjustments. Screen. Probably the dirt in that connection, actually. Yeah, dirty connection in that um, neck board. If I tap it, I gotta clean that neck board, I think. Yeah, I gotta clean that out. Dust and muck's gotta get gotten in there. But it's promising. Let's uh, try getting something in here. I'll try a multimeter and just probe those things. We'll see what we get. Just mess around with it for fun and see what happens. Black horizontal sink, white vertical sink. Yeah, we feel the screen good there. Just messing around like an idiot. Not a good way to do the amp check, obviously. That's a redneck and lazy way to do it. Oh, well, let's just get the set-top box out again. I know it's not going to work, but I'll just prove the fence for what I did with that one there. So, get a composite connection to it and watch what it does, even though it's not going to work, but I know I need a converter. But let's just mess around, just have Just purely for laughs. This is not how you connect one of these, as I said. Just for shits and giggles only. RGB positive for the composite. Ground of the box, the ground. The yellow signal ground, and I ground those between the multimeter leads.
We'll see what happens. I know nothing's gonna happen, but uh, these are just for laughs. Here you go. Nothing much, as I said. That's all you get. RGB is hooked in. His signal uh, grounds go on the ground, along with the HNS ground. That's it. Just messing around. That's all you get for the composite. You get similar with a VGA RGB computer cable as well. As I said, this is just screwing around. I need to get a converter for these things. A jammer, I think they're called a jammer, jammer converter. So. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. You gotta convert these things to work on these um, types of signals, as I said. But as a shit, just for shits and giggles, it uh, yeah, we get somewhat of the effect out of this uh, tube. Anyway, that'll be enough for now. Thanks for watching. I be googled. Oh, it works. The bloody vertical hob was all googled up. It works. It actually darn works. Shit. Yeah, I got some adjustments to do. I gotta adjust everything to fit. I got composite going into all the RGB and the yellow signal ground. So if I join all the RGB and the yellow signal ground all into one, that'll all go to the positive only to the composite cable. The synchronization for the horizontal and the vertical will just go to the ground. It actually works. I didn't think it was gonna work that way, but it actually works. Of course, you just need some sort of send 12 volt or something down the bloody uh, horizontal and vertical sync in the video amplifier is supposed to bloody uh, amplify and uh, drive those signals in through these but it actually works this method works unbelievable I'm gonna mess around for a bit longer so I'll upload this first video this will be part one by the way and I'll keep messing around with this I'm impressed I don't see much smearing or bleeding either so yeah, I'm on something here